Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. In today's video, I'm counting down my top 10 favorite spring and summer Dollar Tree DIYs. These are all things that the Dollar Tree usually restocks every single year, so I hope there's no problem in finding the items to make these crafts. We'll kick it off with DIY number 10. For the next DIY, I'm going to transform this beach sign into a lake house sign. And what I'm going to do first is remove that jute string on the top and I have to remove the starfish. But I'm being really careful in trying to remove the starfish because he is really cute and I want him intact in case I want to use him for a DIY later on. And I was successful by prying him off with my screwdriver. And in the process of removing the starfish, I damaged some of the sign. It started, the paper part started peeling up, but this is going to become the back side anyway. We're going to do our design on this side. And since this sign has the notches like it's a plank wood sign, then I wanted to make sure that I kept that detail because I really liked that. So using a utility knife and not going all the way through, be very gentle and careful. Draw those shiplap lines with your utility knife and then we're going to chisel them out a little bit with a screwdriver so that you get those plank wood effects. And then I smoothed it all out with a piece of rough sandpaper. And I filled in the holes where the hanger was on this sign with spackle. I let it dry and then I sanded that smooth. The first layer of color that's going to show through the top layers is the Waverly Antique Wax. And when I put this on, I was really happy with how this looked pretty much like wood. Um, that's a tip for future use. If you wanted something to look like wood on these MDF signs, that Antique Wax by Waverly works great. Then I used a candle and I went over just in a few places. I did around the edges and then in the middle of the planks. And this is so that when I put top layers of paint on, the paint will not stick where that candle was. Now, the colors that I'm using are the linen white chalk paint, this crystal chalk paint by Waverly, and I had to mix up a concoction, which I think turns out looking kind of like that celery Waverly color, but I don't have celery. I had to mix this moss color with some of the white. So these are all chalk paints that I'm using, and I'm going to do each board a different color. And this is what I would like to call really fun painting because you don't have to be super careful. This is going to ultimately be a very distressed looking piece. Your painting doesn't need to look perfect. This needs to look weathered and like it's been sitting at a lake house. Also, you have some options here as to what color you want your sign to be. Now, I've been wanting to do this color combination for a long time now, and I saw this as my opportunity to do it. So these are the colors that I chose, but by all means, pick whatever colors that you would like. And when I did this crystal chalk paint, I wanted it to be more blue. It was kind of a a grayish color so I used two pretty thick coats so that I could bring out that blue color in it. And for the distressing this time I am using a plastic scraper that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going over all the places where I have put the candle wax and see how that scrapes up so nice, so very, very distressed, weathered, and old looking. And I turned to my Cricut again 
and I printed out some or cut out some decals out of navy blue vinyl. Now, if you have nice handwriting, you don't have to do this. Or if you have any um, letter stickers, which I didn't have, then you could by all means just use letter stickers for this project. Now the back side of this sign is pretty beat up and so I'm going to finish it off using some brown craft paper and I just cut out a piece big enough to fit the back of the sign and it doesn't have to be precise. I hot glue it down and then I flip it over and trim off the excess with a utility knife. And don't forget to cut out the notches where the planks are. For a hanger, I'm using a piece of nautical rope that came from the Dollar Tree and it's actually an unraveled piece. This isn't the whole fat chunky piece. This is like one, one weave. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's one little weave of the rope and so it's thinner. It fits the size of this sign better. And so I hot glued it down and then I cut a chunky fat popsicle stick in half or not a popsicle stick, a craft stick, I guess. I cut that in half and hot glued it over the top for extra security. And here she is. I love this sign. I am just in love with this sign. And if I were to buy this in a store, I imagine it would cost a lot more than just the couple dollars that it costs me. Here's number nine. I'll tell you about this next one. The audio, the original audio is kind of messy just because of some copyright issues and some music, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to tell you, I duped this uh, pineapple bookend that was a set for $49.99. And this was a pineapple cup from the Dollar Tree. I've seen this every summer at the store. So I really think that they should have them again this summer. Watch this be the summer that they don't. But anyway, it has a light on the bottom, which I remove. And then I spray paint the cup white. And I spray paint the leaf part with rose gold, or you could use regular gold or whatever color you like, or leave it green. Then I used painter's tape to tape up the underside, the hole where the straw would go through this lid. Then I used one of the wooden beads from the Dollar Tree and I spray painted it rose gold and I hot glued it where the straw goes in the center of the leaf part. I filled up the cup with a whole canister of salt for nice weight and put the lid back on. To make the bookend part, I'm using an actual bookend that I got at the Dollar Tree and I spray painted it white. Now, originally I had used this Loctite glue and it, it held as long as I made this video, I didn't have any problem, but later on in life, it did come apart. So full disclosure, don't use this glue that I'm using here in this video. I would definitely use E6000. And something about this little cherry pineapple makes me so happy.
number eight. And the first decoration I'm making is going to be using one of these LED outdoor lights from the Dollar Tree. I was so happy to have found these and they have the silver color and they have a gold color. And I'm going to pair this light with one of the tall cylinder vases and the light is going to fit perfectly down on top just like this. And so the first thing is to take that sticky label off of the back, which I used my Dollar Tree scraper and some Goo Gone for the residue. And whenever I use the Goo Gone, I always wipe my item back off so that it doesn't have the oiliness because there is citrus oil in the Goo Gone and it makes your, uh, your project oily. And to give this plain vase some interest, I'm using some of the white rocks from the Dollar Tree to sprinkle down in the bottom. And I didn't use very many. It was just whatever I had left over from other projects. And it covered maybe an inch at the bottom of the vase. And what else should go inside the vase? But a nice chunky little succulent. And this one came from the Dollar Tree. I plucked it right out of its little fake vase and I stuck it right down in the center of our glass vase. Now I'm switching gears and I'm using E6000 to adhere the light to the glass vase because I just kind of feel like E6000 does a better job with glass. And because I hate waiting for glue to dry, I also use my hot glue so that I get an immediate hold. Just be extra careful that none of your glue drips down the inside of the glass. And here is the finished decoration and I loved setting it on my new table. Here's number seven. So this is a piece that I found on kirklands.com and it inspired me to make my own. This is a very large jar, much larger than the ones from Kirkland's that I got at Target a while ago for $6. You could definitely make this using one of the cylinder jars from the Dollar Tree as well. And this is a hula skirt also from the Dollar Tree that I've been using for well over a year now, taking bits off of it, using it as raffia. So what you're going to need to do is use each little bunch, it's in bunches of three or four strands in each little bunch, and you're going to need to cut three of those bunches at a time off of the hula skirt and you're going to braid them together. To do the braiding, I used painter's tape to tape them down to my work table and then I just braided them and when I came to the end, I tied a knot. And in this project, I think it does better if you do sort of a looser braid. Don't tighten it too much. You want them kind of large. And I also realized that you could do it this way. You can braid it right on the hula skirt, just tape the hula skirt down and braid your three bunches together. There's a knot on each end to keep the braids in place. And I made 10 of these braids. And I wanted there to be a finishing piece at the top and bottom to go around the braids. So I'm using some thicker jute twine that I had. I think the perfect thing would be the wired jute twine that you get at Dollar Tree. And I just measured it around my jar and cut the length and you'll need two pieces. And then I took a few strands of the hula skirt and I taped it on one end of the jute twine. And then I'm going to wrap and wrap and wrap it around the jute twine to cover it. When I came to the end, I used another piece of tape to hold it together. If you hadn't noticed, I was wearing a new bracelet the day I made this video and I bought it from a lady 
at an art festival over the weekend, and I just love it. It's one of those snap bracelets. It was inexpensive, and I just love it. But I wanted to mention it because I want you to support your local artist and just go to the local art shows and see what you can find. And back to the DIY, so I have 10 of the braids and two of the wrapped jute strings. Now it's time to apply them to the jar and I just used hot glue and I started with one of the wrapped jute strings. Then I started applying the braids and at first I didn't think to cut the knots off because I thought well they would be at the back of the jar and they wouldn't be showing. I'd have that facing the wall or something but just go ahead and cut those off. Those knots are just temporary I think just to hold the braids in place while you're working with it but then when you go to apply it on the jar go ahead and cut them off for a nicer look. So here's how it was looking after I got my braids all applied, except for the one knot that I didn't get cut off. But anywho, then I added the top wrapped jute string. And she was all done. I was so happy to have made this really pretty thing for just stuff I had already at my house. Look out for number six. On with the fabric decorating, I have another long piece of that felt fabric from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use a wooden dowel and this time we're going to create a long flower and that dowel is going to be the stem. So the first thing you need to do is hot glue this felt piece and double it over in half. Then use a sharp pair of scissors to cut slits into the folded edge. Put a dollop of hot glue on the end of the felt piece and then use your dowel rod to stick onto the end and roll it up at the top. After the hot glue has set, then begin twisting the dowel rod and rolling that felt piece down the length of your stem. And see how this kind of looks like a lavender stem? In fact, you could even use purple felt and it could be lavender. Keep on twisting until you get to the end of the felt and then hot glue it in place. And so I made three and I love doing them with the white felt. made flowers and I'm so happy with the cute results.
I can't believe we're already halfway there. Here's number five. Since I had that fabric ribbon out in the last DIY, I was inspired to use it somehow in recovering this Dollar Tree notebook. The first thing I needed to do was remove the elastic band, which easily just came right off. And then I also needed to remove the metal pieces that held that elastic band in place, and they easily popped off using my scissors. Since you'll be covering this notebook, you need your surface to be flat and smooth. That's why we're removing all these pieces. And again, I'm using what was left of that one piece that was only a dollar at the dollar, well, actually a dollar 25, the one piece of self-adhesive wallpaper, and that's going to be our new notebook cover. I cut a piece of the wallpaper to fit around the notebook with a little overlapping on the edges. Then remove the backing off of the wallpaper and put your notebook down on top of it. And I like to do this one side at a time. So I put one side down first and I stick it down using firm pressure with my hands. And then I also like to use my Cricut scraper to burnish it down even more so we make sure it's nice and stuck. Then I use my scissors to cut the corners and this is so that we have an easier time folding it around the notebook. Then I lay the back side down and press it down firmly the same as I did the front. And trim the corners and then you can begin folding it into place. I did cut a little notch out on each end where the book binding is so that I would be able to fold it nicely on both sides. I trimmed the little notch so it would be the perfect size to fit inside the binding without messing up the pages. Now that we have the book wrapped, we can decorate it, and these are the items I'm using to decorate it. I have some fabric ribbon from the Burlap Fabric Company, and I have some little scrapbook pieces that I ordered off of Amazon, and I'm going to put them in my Amazon store because they are so pretty. I think that you guys would enjoy using them too, and I'll have a link for them in my description box. I cut a piece of the fabric ribbon to wrap around the front of the book and I hot glued it in place. I arranged the scrapbook paper pieces the way I wanted them to look on the front and I used this clear craft glue from the Dollar Tree to stick them down. And I also used a paintbrush to paint that glue on so that it wouldn't be too gloppy. I wanted it to be um, as thin as I possibly could make it. Of course, you have a world just full of options on how you would like to decorate these kind of little notebooks. This is the way that I went, but oh my goodness, there are so many cute products at the Dollar Tree and they have nice stickers and little wood cutouts that could embellish these kind of things very nicely. And here she is all complete and looking very cute and all inspired by a little piece of fabric ribbon. Here's number four. This next DIY is the prettiest thing to do with those ceramic bunnies that you can find at the Dollar Tree. 
The bunny has a hanger attached to his head, but it's really easy taken out with needle nose pliers. Then paint the entire bunny with any kind of brown paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint and truffle. After the brown paint is dry, then use some white chalk paint and go over the brown paint, but kind of lightly, haphazardly, and letting some of that brown paint show through where the natural indentations of the bunny are. Then after the white paint is dry, use the wet distressing method to wipe off a little bit more of that white paint around his eyes, his ears, his nose, and just in a few little spots where you think a little brown showing through would be pretty. Wet distressing is really easy. All you need is a wet paper towel. And if at any point you feel like you've took off too much white paint, just add a little bit right back on and it's easily fixed. And isn't he so cute to sit on top of the jar of eggs? My top three coming at ya. The next dupe are these really cute ceramic flowers and the price was $11.99. So if that was half off, we'll say $6 for this flower, but we're gonna use some Dollar Tree items and we're gonna make it for two, $2. The first thing you need is this little dish from the Dollar Tree. The second thing you need are these plastic white spoons from the Dollar Tree. And the third thing you need is a lit candle. Now I know that this may seem crazy, but <laughs> you can melt these spoons and manipulate them to look like flower petals. Just hold the spoon over the heat of the flame, not touching the flame at all. Just hold it until the spoon starts to bend and warp. And then after a couple seconds, you can actually touch it with your fingers without getting burned. It won't be hot because it cools really quick. And you can shape it and fold into leaf petals. And here I'm showing you where you're going to cut with your scissors to just get the petal. And you can heat that part over the flame. So when you use your scissors, the plastic doesn't go flying across the room. It's already softened and it's easy to cut. And so you'll make enough of these that they will be the first layer to go around inside this dish. When you have enough for the first layer, then just use your hot glue gun to glue them all down into place. Now you're ready to start making your second layer of petals. And each layer that you go up, you want to warp and bend the spoon a little more because you know, when you get to the center of a flower, it's more curled up the more toward the center you get. Also, with each layer that you go up toward the center of the flower, you want to cut the end of the spoon off a little shorter. Just keep on making petals and hot gluing them around your flower. And when you're finished, you have something that looks like a ceramic flower. No one would ever know you made these out of plastic spoons. 
in Hobby Lobby, the flower was $11.99 and I was able to make my version of it for only $2. Number two. Next up on the Kirkland's dupe list are these candles. And I know you would have thought the same thing if you saw them. $7.99 and you know where you can get these candles. The Dollar Tree. I picked up three of them and I'm going to make my own labels. Now these won't be scented candles like the ones in Kirkland's, but they're going to be pretty. The first step is to remove their original labels. Here are my own labels that I made using the Canva program. There will be a link in my description box so that you can print these out for yourself and use. They don't say the same thing as the candles and Kirkland's because they had their scent names on them. I just made up some new things to put on here. Once you have the labels printed, then cut them out. Then do a test fit around one of your candles to see what length you'll need to cut off. Then you'll need some clear contact paper. Cut a piece of the clear contact paper that is the same size as your label, but adding about half an inch around each side. Then peel the backing off of the contact paper and stick it down to the front side of your label. And surprisingly, this went down with not a single wrinkle in it. Apply the label to the candle and it's all done. And how cute. I did notice after the fact that there was a date printed on only one of these jars. And so I just used some fingernail polish remover and it came right off. So if you run into that, just know it's easy to get off of there. And again, Kirkland's candle was $7.99. I was able to make mine for $1 because I already had the clear contact paper, but they do sell that at the Dollar Tree. So if you had to pay $2, it's still a really good bargain and so good that I made three of them. And number one, it's a two for one, and it's using that beautiful contact paper that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's the prettiest thing that I've found there all year long, and so I couldn't decide between my two top favorites, so I had to combine them. The first makeover I did was with this candy jar that you get at the Dollar Tree, which a lot of the things that I'm gonna use today did come from the Dollar Tree. So this is all really inexpensive stuff that you can do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all the labels and packaging off of the candy jar. So my idea was to put the contact paper on the lid. So the first thing I had to do was remove the original knob, which I tried pulling on it and it did crack the lid a little bit, so don't pull on it. And I used my wire cutters instead to loosen it. It didn't cut, but just loosen it so that I could pull it off of its little attached piece. And save that original knob because you'll need it later. What I wanted to use instead was this wooden knob that's actually a wheel off of one of these wooden cars from the Dollar Tree. I used my wire cutters to cut the wheel off of the car and cut it down to size.
The next step is to cover the lid with the contact paper, which is just a really easy process of tracing the lid onto the contact paper, cutting it out and putting it on. To attach the wooden knob that we made, we're going to use the original plastic knob. Use a heavy duty glue like E6000 and put it down inside the cylinder part of the plastic knob and put it right back down over the post where it was attached. Then use that heavy duty glue and put a dollop of it on top of the plastic knob and put the wooden wheel down on top. And leave it be until the glue is dried. And my idea while constructing this was to use it to hold my laundry pods. Continuing on with the laundry room theme, I wanted something to put my laundry pins in. So this is a jar that came from the Dollar Tree. All I'm going to do is paint the lid with some white acrylic paint or you could use chalk paint. And I didn't worry about covering the top because that's where our contact paper is going to be. And I didn't worry too much about covering every little nook and cranny around the edge of the lid because I wanted that distressed rustic look. Peel and stick the contact paper and you have yourself a matching clothespin jar to go with your Tide Pod container. So that does it for my top 10 for spring summer Dollar Tree DIYs. I hope you guys enjoyed this compilation video and I'll be back with you next week with fresh new ideas. Bye!